So we're now going to talk about vectors and tensors and how that all fits together. And by tensors, we mean something a little bit in addition to what we mean by vectors. Um, but vectors are sometimes also used in that sense. So first of all, we want to think about these as objects that are filling a field. And by field, it means something like force field in Star Wars. Like it's something that fills space. And within that space filling thing, there is a property that it can be described at each point within that system. So temperature is a field. The temperature field in this room is the temperature at every point in the room. And that's a scalar temperature, which um, exists at every point in the room. Now, why do I would say it's a scalar? Well, it only has a magnitude. It does not have a direction. Um, a vector might be the velocity of all of the air in this room moving around. And in that case, we have not only a magnitude, but also a direction for the velocity at every point in space. In that sense, I mean vector in the sense of a three-dimensional vector, which I think of as being oriented in a real three-dimensional space. So a vector is really the element that exists in a linear multi-dimensional space. Um, and there's no reason why a vector in that kind of framework has to be limited to three dimensions. We could have a four dimensional vector, a two dimensional vector, a one dimensional vector, or like a thousand dimensional vector if our vector was something like the components of a Fourier transform that we stored in an array um, on a computer. And when we talked about matrices already, matrices were operating on vectors and we had a relationship between the like the number of elements in a vector and the number of unknowns in that system of equations. So the vector that I mean here is something a little different. I mean, the vector that is the object of something like a velocity that exists in real three-dimensional or four-dimensional, if you include time, space. And so sometimes people use the word tensor um, for that expanded definition. Okay, so if we're really existing in three-dimensional space, like the space that we live in, or four-dimensional space, if you include time, um, we might want to think about some of the ways that we can describe what vectors in this space are. And so the vectors have three elements, like we talked about before with regular vectors. They have something, uh, a dot product, which is defined on them. They have a magnitude, which is the dot product of them with themselves the square of the magnitude. And so we can start thinking about that things. And then it's also useful to think about basis vectors, which are unit length vectors in each of the three directions. So in a normal x, y, z space, these are often called i hat, which is the one in the x direction, j hat, which is the one in the y direction, k hat, which is the one in the z direction. And so those three adding together, um, those three uh, basis elements with different coefficients out front allows you to express any vector you want in the either the three um, component by component direction, or we can express them a little bit more abstractly and just think of them as a unit length in those different directions. So one of the things that spread through all through space could be a scalar. So temperature is an example of a scalar, but another example of a scalar is the magnitude of a vector. A vector is something that has both direction and magnitude, and so you can build any three-dimensional vector out of a linear combination of the three basis vectors or any other choice of three basis vectors that are linearly independent. Um, normally, we think of them as being orthogonal, that is, perpendicular to one another like this. Um, but that is, doesn't have to be the case. You can actually have three basis vectors as long as you can get construct any vector you like out of the sum of all three. Um, if we just take two of these basis vectors, then we might be considering all of the vectors within a particular plane. So we would say that those two vectors span the, the vectors within a plane. And that's another uh, subspace of the three-dimensional space that we think about. Okay, so a vector has a magnitude and a direction, and sometimes we just put a little hat on it like this, or sometimes it's bold. If we're writing it in a textbook, it's a little hard to write bold on the board, so I usually put the little hat on it like this. So a vector dotted with itself. Um, 
is the magnitude of the vector squared. This is a scalar, so we start with two vectors. We have a, a mathematical multiplication operation that gives us a scalar out of the two, and that's just the sum of the three components of the vector squared plus, plus, plus. Two different vectors dotted together is also a scalar, but this scalar is positive definite because each of these is squared. This scalar could be positive or negative, and it's the uh, degree, it is maximum if these two vectors are aligned with one another for a given magnitude of V and a given magnitude of U. It's the opposite of that when they're anti-parallel, and it's zero if they're perpendicular to one another. So those are useful things to think about in terms of the vector operations, but this is a, this is a scalar. Um, you also can multiply together two vectors and get another vector and something called the cross product. This is a specific operation that only really works in three dimensions or uh, systems like that. And one way to think of it is you make the determinant, you take the determinant of a matrix, which has the i hat, j hat, and k hat, these three basis vectors. Then you take the first uh, vectors components in the next row. Then you take the second vectors components in the next row. And you take the determinant of that, which gives you this funny thing. And there's a little right-hand rule to remember what the direction is that is the outcome of this. So if I take my fingers on the first one and then move them over to the second one, my thumb points in the direction of the cross product. So U cross V would be right directly into the board. Or if I do it in the opposite order, V cross U, it would be out of the board, which is what I've indicated here. So an important property of the cross product is that it's anti-symmetric if you reverse the order of the terms. The dot product is symmetric if you reverse the order of terms. That's an important difference between the two. And you have to be a little careful with the cross product. Okay, so the cross product of a vector with itself is sort of like the dot product of a vector with itself, but the cross product of a doctor, vector with itself is zero because when the dot product is maximum, is when the two vectors are aligned. The cross product is maximum when they're perpendicular to one another. So this one sometimes is written as the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other vector times the cosine of the angle in between them. This one is written as the magnitude of one vector times the magnitude of the other vector times the sine of the angle in between them. And if it's the same vector, the sine of the angle is zero, which means that the sine is zero, so it's zero. Um, but similarly, the dot product of two vectors, a vector and something that's perpendicular to it, so say u and then a vector that's perpendicular to u, is zero. Um, and a very specific example, which is a nice one to think of, is u dot v cross u. So v cross u is always perpendicular to u because of this right-hand rule stuff that we just talked about. Dotting that into u, it means that u is being dotted into something that's perpendicular to so that's equal to zero. You also can go through the mach machinery of calculating out the cross product with all of these terms and then dying it into U and finding out that it cancels all out because of the symmetries involved with the pluses and minuses inside of that uh, big long product. Okay, so we can have vectors, we can have scalars, we actually can have something else, a higher order tensor, a second rank tensor, which is sort of like a matrix but it's something that has the property of being like two vectors. So you can, like a matrix, you can left multiply a matrix, you can right multiply a matrix against a vector, and you get different answers because one of them, when you, one of them acts on the columns of the matrix and one of them acts on the rows of the matrix when you do that matrix multiply. Tensors are similar to that, but maybe the way to think of it that's simplest is to think of what if I take the outer product of two vectors. Um, uh, let me, I don't even have a symbol for that. Let me just write it as u, u, v, and I'm going to put an i and a j to mean that I mean that they're two different components of one component under u and one component under v, and that would be a matrix which is just u1, v1, u1, v2, u1, v3, and so on, u2, v1, u2, v2, and so on. 
And this is a matrix or a tensor which has nine elements in it. So it has as many elements as of one vector times as many elements of the other vector. And I could actually dot this thing into another vector if I wanted from the left and make it interact with say the U side or from the right and make it interact with the V side. And so what a tensor, second rate tensor is, is it's something that you have to hit with two vectors before it becomes a scalar. A first rank vector is something that you have to dot into just one other vector to become a scalar. And a scalar is like a zeroth rank vector in that it is already a scalar without multiplying by any vectors at all. If that makes sense. All right. Let me talk about one more thing that's important about these vectors in real space rather than vectors in uh, the vector space of operators or matrices in the computer or coefficients of an equation. So in real space, when we rotate the coordinate system, something special happens. So if you think about temperature at a particular point in space, if I rotate the coordinate system, so that I could either think that I'm rotating this room or more precisely, I think I'm rotating myself and changing my frame of reference without affecting the room, does the temperature change? Of course it doesn't change. I might label its position to be different. So if I was facing this way, I might say that it was, you know, X, Y, Z is this point. Now it's different X, Y, and Z because my orientation, my coordinate system is now this way. Maybe a different X, Y, Z to get to that same point. But position is not a scalar. Position is a vector. So the position of all of the points in space changes when I rotate my coordinate system. But the scalars located at each position do not change. What about the vectors located at different points? We just said that position changes. It doesn't change in that it's not like there's a... The position in space still exists in both coordinate systems, but the way that I would refer to it based on my coordinate system is different. So if I have x, let me do it right, if I have x, y, z in my coordinate system here, and I have my point over here, that's a positive x, a negative y, a positive z to get me here. Now if I change to a different coordinate system over here where I have x in this direction, y in this direction, z in this direction, it has positive x, positive y, and positive z. So I've just switched um, around what's what. And if you think a little bit more slowly about that, you would see that I was also trading which one was X for which one was Y when I did that 90 degree rotation. So there's one flip of sign and there's a minus and there's a trade between different positions. The Z was the same because I just rotated in the horizontal. Okay, so how, how does a vector change? Well, the position changes like we just said. But if I, in fact, if I had had a velocity at that point, and my velocity was listed in components that were related to transposing that velocity down to the origin of my coordinate system to give it my i hat, my j hat, and my k hat, then those i hats, j hats, and k hats would have to change if I switch to my other coordinate system because now x is in a different direction, y is in a direction, different direction, z is in the same direction, but that was a coincidence based on the transformation. So the point here is that a tensor or a vector in real space is something that rotates like a vector. A scalar is something that rotates like a scalar, namely it doesn't change at all. A vector dotted into a vector at a particular point in space is a scalar so the dot product doesn't change, even though the components of those two vectors will change, that special sum, that dot product between them does not change. And in addition, the cross product doesn't change between two vectors, except that its result is a, a vector who does also change. There's one very fancy thing that we're not gonna talk about right now, we probably won't talk about too much, which is vectors are also, do what you'd expect them to do if you reflect them in a mirror. They go from, uh, you know, the dot products and scalars and everything flip, all of the coordinate systems flip, 
the way that you would think reflecting in a mirror, but you have to be really careful with the cross product because the cross product not only flips, but it also changes sign in a way that's special and has to do with the ordering of these things. So remember, all the things that have right hand rules in them are gonna look like a left hand rule in the mirror. So if you have a right hand rule in the cross product, when you flip in a mirror, you're now gonna have a left hand rule that's corresponding to that. So that kind of symmetry is something that you need to be a little bit careful about. Um, great, so that's the basic idea of vectors and scalars in real space, not vectors and scalars and kind of linear algebra space.